we are going to be painting a rhinoculus. Pretty sure I'm saying that right. I could also be saying it wrong, but I did Google how to say it. It's a really beautiful flower. There's actually a flower field by my house that blooms with them in these stripes of colors. They're truly just amazing flowers, but it is going to be a little challenging because there's a ton of petals. I want to say there's probably maybe like 75 petals on this thing. We're not going to paint every single one. We're going to simplify it slightly, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to draw. I, I suggest bringing up a picture of one if you don't already have it, maybe on your phone or your computer. I'm looking at a picture right now and it's we're kind of going to do a side view. So make this like kind of oval shape. I'm drawing a little darker because I want you guys to be able to see. So this oval shape and then just the stem coming down like this. Now the sketching part is going to be the most challenging or not the most challenging, but it's definitely going to take some time. There's a section in the middle that is just kind of like I'm making little C shapes. And then I'm gonna go around and for time's sake, I'm gonna make my petals a little bit bigger. But I'm actually, I'm gonna start here at the bottom, making an elongated curve. And then I'm fanning out those bigger petals down here. Now somebody requested that we learn how to paint this together. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm just coming in here, I'm drawing all these little petals and then just making these really thin lines. Just basically stacking all these petals. There are so many petals on a rhinoculus, so we have to account for all those. If you can, draw lighter than me. I'm drawing this dark so that you can see it. I'm just drawing. Like I said, it's gonna be really helpful if you guys have a picture of a rhinoculus in front of you because I, uh, it's really kind of hard to explain how to draw this. I'm just making a ton of petals. Some of them are these really skinny kind of disc shapes. Um, the ones at the bottom are gonna be more open though. And they're all just kind of stacked on top of each other. But ultimately, it's all curving around this center part. So as you go up, you're gonna start curling them in. I'm, I'm really curious how many of you guys are, are gonna watch this and stick with me. <laughs> this is gonna be challenging. Challenging in a good way. Whenever I get an order and they're like, can you draw ranaculuses on it? I'm like, yes, but it's going to cost more because it's a lot. <laughs> and now as we're getting closer up here, some of these petals, you're going to see more of them. It's just so many petals. Another a similar flower to this is the peony, which has a ridiculous amount of, of petals. Okay, and some of these, we're getting closer. So the petals, first they start off on the bottom kind of flat, and then they kind of all stack really close like a sandwich. And then they start to loosen up a little bit around the center and show more of their, their like side. And we have all these over here. And again, it's just these little kind of like C shapes. And you want to get this part right. Um, oh, and we are doing a more realistic looking flower today. I know sometimes I do kind of a loose version. This is definitely going to be more realistic. I debated doing it loose, but to be honest, if you paint this loosely, it's not really gonna look that different from like a rose. So I really wanted to do this full tutorial and just fair warning, this is probably gonna take us an hour. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it's an hour of self-care and you know, working on your artistic talent. Or hopefully it's relaxing for you too. 
Okay, so I have it painted the basic layout here. And because I drew this so dark, I am gonna come in here and lift up a little bit with my gummy eraser. And we're working in layers today. So if you haven't painted with me before, when we work in layers, we paint a layer and then we let it dry. And sometimes it takes 10 to 15 minutes for it to dry. Obviously, I'm not gonna just have you wait here while it dries, so I am going to cut the video and then start over when, it's, when it is dry. And I'll let you know when I do that so you know to dry yours off as well. And you can use a blow dryer if you wanna speed up that process. So my ranunculus is gonna be a red color. And what I wanna start off with is just my lightest tone. So if you look at your photo of a flower, I'm gonna bring up one right now, this ranunculus, you can see there's this yellow portion in the middle and then there's red, but it's not just one tone of red. If it was, we wouldn't get any kind of um, visual interest and it would look really flat. So you can see like the lightest red is almost a little bit orange. So when I mix up the lightest color, I'm gonna add a little orange to it and maybe just a slight bit of yellow to just lighten it up a little bit. And I'm using a lot of water because it's just gonna be a wash and I'm coming in here and just painting where the flower is. Painting. I'm gonna put a little of that yellow green in the middle when I get to that section. So now I'm in that section where it's gonna be a little yellow green. I'm going to grab yellow green and add it in there. And it's gonna bleed a little bit because this is all wet around it. So I'm going to come back with my dry brush. So I'm just rinsing it and then patting on a paper towel. Let's pull up that color. And this is really light, so I am gonna come in and add just a little more color. And because my paper is already wet, it's just gonna nicely bleed. Now don't go too dark because you wanna be able to see your lines still because those are gonna be really important when we start painting all of these tiny little petals. And another thing you'll notice if you're looking at the flower is the petals down here are really dark. So what I can do is just kind of punch in a little color down here. I could have left my pencil lines a little darker actually because I'm starting not to be able to see them, but that's okay. Okay. Now we have to let this dry and then we're gonna come back to it. So whatever your method is, if you wanna grab a blow dryer to dry it or if you're just gonna let it dry naturally, let it dry. You'll know it's dry when it's no longer shiny and you can touch it and it doesn't pull up any color. All right, we're dry and we're back at it. Now we need to come in with a darker color. So go ahead and mix up something that's slightly darker because we've gotten our lightest shadow or our lightest layer down. Um, it's <laughs> like a rainy, cloudy day today, but there's some patches of blue. So if the lighting gets bright and dark, that's why it's because I'm using natural light and the sun is going in and out of the clouds. Now what we're going to do is you're going to want to take a smaller brush. So I have a size one. A two would probably be good. I really don't recommend using anything other than that because there are some tight spots in here. So we have our slightly darker color. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start painting the petals. So you, the thing with this is because there's so many details, once we get a petal wet, we're not going to be able to paint the petal next to it. Otherwise, it's going to bleed. So just keep that in mind when you're painting. There, I have a petal over here that I'm gonna start with and I just have paint on my brush and I'm outlining that petal. It's 
is turning out to be a little more orange. So I'm just outlining this side of it. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush off. I don't know if you guys can see my water. Grab just regular water and start up here. It's just wet and it slowly kind of bleeds in. And I'm gonna use that same technique and feel free to mix up things a little bit. So if you wanted to add a little more red, this color is actually more orange than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna kind of be going along with that throughout this. And I'm just coming in here and I'm looking at my reference photo and seeing what petals, like how dark are they? Looks like this section right here is gonna be a lot darker because it's almost like a, there's a big shadow here. So you can always add in a little blue, kind of make it a little purple. And I'm just, all those little petals, we just have to go in and paint them individually one by one. So I'm making that line of paint and then I'm coming in with a clean brush and mixing it around. I wish I had some nice music, but there's not a lot of royalty-free music that's fun to listen to. <laughs> so as you guys can see, this is a little bit of a time-consuming process, but that's okay. Hopefully you're just in it and enjoying it. It's the same method all the way around. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if I just use the same color all the way around here, it's gonna look really boring, right? Even though we are getting some highlights here because this is a little darker section, but we wanna change up the colors because if we look at our flower, the one, our reference photo, if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit or like squint your eyes, you can see there's some like dark sections and then there's some lighter sections. And you wanna keep that in mind when you're painting because it's gonna help it to look more realistic. Now up here, there's these really, really tiny lines, and I'm actually just gonna make lines. I'm not gonna worry about doing that method. Just gonna make some like little teeny petals that are just around here. And I'm going to switch to that yellow-green color again. Actually more yellow. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just like little teeny petals. We don't have to get too detailed in here. I am going to get detailed here, but if I was doing this for a client, I would probably get even like down even more into this and all the small details. But I don't want this to be four hours of you guys watching this. So. <laughs> I'm painting this um, as part of the challenge and I if you guys are here because you're part of the 31 day March flower challenge welcome if you're here just because you found this on YouTube that's awesome too thanks for being here you can of course put music on in the background for yourself <laughs> I'm not saying anything really important now just going around there's some leaves or petals back here that are a little darker. And just make sure you can see your, your pencil lines. So I know I said in the beginning, try to make them as light as possible. If you were doing something such as like really light peach, then yes, I would recommend making it super, super light. But since we're using a color that's darker, this red color, we don't need to worry too much about these lines because they're gonna they're gonna get covered up and if you look at the reference photo too you can almost see it's not black but it appears black to the eye and you can add that in if you, like a really dark shadow i'm gonna wait until we get a little deeper in our layers to do that but that'll be a good way to really show the depth here as well. And since there's so many petals, we can kind of work for a while on this before we run into petals that are touching, which is nice because it saves us from having to um, wait for everything to dry. 
So we just make sure we're not touching any of the wet petals. I'm gonna do some of these bigger ones down here. Again, I'm just painting along that edge of the petal and then I'm grabbing just water and I'm painting where the paint is not and then when I touch it, it kind of bleeds and explodes into all where that water was and you can move it around too if you need to. And feel free to add in just like a little pop of yellow if you want to. Sometimes it's a lot more interesting if you do stuff like that instead of just making it one note. And the key to getting your paint to move around is it needs to stay wet. So if you make that line but the paint is pretty dry, you're gonna have a hard time moving it around. So you gotta make sure it stays wet. Okay, I think I can do one here. Just a real thin. And some of these, I'm not even going to do that technique where I paint and then add the water because this is literally what the petal looks like to me. It's just the skinny edge because there's so many petals. I'm gonna make sure that I don't get them to touch. Here we go. Probably do that one a little darker. And then I'm going to make some of these petals up here, they're a little lighter. So is this dry? Yeah, that's dry. I always say this in my videos, but if you have any suggestions on things that you would like to paint, it doesn't have to be flowers, but I always love to hear your suggestions. We are in the middle of 31 days of flowers for March, so if you're not aware, I'm doing a challenge, or I did a challenge if you're watching this after March 2022, where we painted a flower a day. And it's such a great way to just get better at watercolor or if you've never done watercolor before helps you kind of just get started sometimes just what you need is a little push or or like community because we're all kind of doing it together so that's really encouraging as well and I don't know if you guys can see it but our renaculus is starting to come together now I can't really touch anything here because it's gonna touch that or that. Can't do that one, can't do that one. This is all wet, can't do those. Um, mm, that guy's pretty dry, so we are gonna be able to come in and do this one right here. And technically what we would wanna see is darker and then we're getting lighter as we get to the center because the center petals are more new I guess you would say or they haven't been exposed to the sun quite as long so they're going to be a little lighter than the stuff underneath plus they don't have the shadows of everything being on top of them just going to do some little c curves up here and I think, yep, we can do this petal. I'm gonna add a little more yellow. Just along the bottom. And you wanna think about your light source when you're painting. So the reason that we're making it light up here is because the light would be hitting the top of the petal, but not the bottom of the petal. And so there's a little shadow there. Make more of a shadow here. All right. This is 
is dry back here, so we can come in. I don't know. That one's dry too. <laughs> it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Operation. <laughs> Did you guys ever play that game? <laughs> you like can't touch a certain side or you'll zzz. It's kind of the same thing. It won't zap you, but you're going to make your paint bleed and that is not what you want. I think that... Oh, okay, we can work there. See, this is a cool thing about something that has so many petals is you can, there's always gonna be a space to work because things are drying as you're painting because there's so many details. But with something more flat, say if you're painting an avocado, you'd have to wait for everything to dry because everything, it's more simple and everything is touching. It, touching. I'm just gonna add a little, you can just poke in color and it will bleed because the paint's wet. Coming in here, just add, there's a little petal here. The more you paint, the more you'll start to notice that when you look at things in nature, you see them like this, like the light source and oh, look how um, like light it is at the top and then underneath it's darker. It's, it's really interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna put just a little darker section. I'm using a little bit of brown and blue, kind of make a black color, but I don't want it to be midnight black. And I'm just going to make like a, a little, line here what the heck is going on okay I don't know why that's not working there we go just so it looks like where it would there technically would be it's like a hole right here so it would be a dark little shadow um, we can do there's a little petal up here I'm gonna do some darker color in here because I should have a little more variation. So I'm taking red and adding a little bit of blue. Not so much blue that we're getting purple, but a significant amount of blue. So it looks darker. I'm just gonna add a little water to kind of blend it around here. Same thing over here. It almost looks like, not really a peony, but it's so similar, but a peony has a lot more jagged edge petals. Um, I'm trying, as you can see, I'm trying to see what's dry and I, I touch it to see if it's dry, which is fine, but if it is really wet, you're gonna pull up pull up pigment. Okay, so we're getting lots of shadows in here, which is fine, because they're almost just like little lines. Do a little, there we go. Come in here, we're gonna, this is a little bit of a bigger petal. So we are gonna go back to our method like this. Oh, okay, I made a mistake. This was not dry and so it started to bleed, so we're gonna leave that alone. We can go back up here. 
And if you guys are feeling frustrated right now, if it's not looking the way you want it to look, don't worry. Um, it just comes with practice. I'm still a work in progress in my mind when I do this because it's hard to keep the colors the same. Um, what I mean is to have a value variation that looks realistic. Because to me, I'm looking at this right now, I'm like, oh, there's kind of like a lot of yellow and it's not, it's not matching the colors in the photo perfectly, but it's not, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, I'm, I know for myself, I'm still a work in progress, but don't feel bad. Like that's, watercolor is all about, I mean, anything in life is just all about practice. It's going to take time. Just, you know, like lean into this, let it be meditative and just enjoy the process. Basically, I'm just giving myself a pep talk because <laughs> I'm the kind of person that doesn't enjoy the process and I just freak out if something's not perfect. But watercolor is meditative and it's just, you know, it's a great way to relax. And and for me, it is my business. So I think that's where I come in like super hard on the perfectionist side. But I also... Even when I'm not working, I like to watercolor paint because it is relaxing to me and I do really enjoy it. So just letting yourself be where you're at right now is good. Don't be too hard on yourself. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Uh, I can't really touch anything else right now because everything needs to dry. Oh, actually over here. Coming in here. That's really red, but that's okay. And I can do this petal, which I've been waiting to do for a while. The key to, to layer painting, I know I've said this before, but letting it dry, but letting it dry completely. Because sometimes it looks dry and it might be dry to the touch, but it's not totally dry. And that can cause some issues or it just causes it not to look as crisp and clean. Like it's bleeding a little bit here because it's not completely 100% dry. I'm going to paint this one next. But that's okay. Awesome. This guy, I'm gonna grab kind of a deeper red. Because there would be a heavy shadow here, or at least there is in my painting or my drawing. And keep in mind, if your drawing isn't matching your reference photo perfectly, neither is mine. It's really hard to, unless you were gonna trace it, it's really hard to get it to be exact. And that's okay because it's art and it can be slightly different. It doesn't have to be an exact replica. The only things that I'm really particular about being exact replicas are pet portraits because little nuances on pets are so important. And of course, house paintings. And I don't draw people because there's just a whole lot of stress for me in that regard. <laughs> I don't want somebody to come back to me and be like, you drew me too fat or I don't look like that, you know? <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good here. I'm gonna step or draw the, do the stem really quick. Just mixing up a green. It's a pretty bright green. These are pretty bright flowers. And the stem, I'm just using a yellowy green. We're not going to get too detailed with the stem because it is not our focal point here. But I am going to add just a tiny little shadow under the petals if my brush will allow me. There we go. 
maybe down the side. And I'm just going to go in if I think that there's any more places that need a little more detail. I'm gonna add a little more green here. Again, I would probably be doing a lot more here if this was client work. Um, adding a ton more shadows and trying to make it as realistic as possible. But this is good for what we're doing today and just kind of learning how to paint a ranaculus because if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of petals <laughs> and a lot of details. And I want you guys to enjoy this and not be like, oh my God. <laughs> and we actually haven't painted this leaf yet a second time. Sorry, this petal yet. So we are going to add just a little something something there. And I might just come in and do slight shadows. So like here. Here. But you don't want them all to be the same because if they are then it's it's going to look too cookie cutter not like nature. See, just adding that makes it look like there's a significant shadow there. And this one, 